bless you. God bless you, Brother Danny. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Good to be in the house of the Lord. Is this too loud? Good to be in the house of the Lord again this morning. God has given us a, a beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Beautiful day to worship God and give him praise and honor and glory for his goodness. God has the intention of blessing us. That's what he wants to do pour out his blessings upon people that serve him. And uh, I found out that the Christian way is the way that I want to live. Yeah. I, I found that out almost 40 years ago now. It's been about 38 years. Yeah. And oh, I'm so thankful that God had mercy on me and uh, I'm thankful for what he does for the United States of America. We might not deserve it, but because of Christian people here in the United States, God still has got, I believe he's got a hedge around the yeah. United States. Uh, I'm talking about his glory. Oh, there's so much that we can testify and give him praise for that he does for us. I'm going to go back into 1 Corinthians before I get started. I want to bring this to your attention. Why the world is in the shape it's in. Uh, uh, in Second Corinthians, the second chapter, in fourteenth verse, it says, "But the natural man receiveth nothing, and receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him; neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned." That's 14, the second chapter, verse 14. In the first chapter of Corinthians, verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. The preaching of the cross. Uh, I'd like to do something this morning. If it's permittable, I want to say hi to someone in the Pocahontas, Arkansas, just west of there. They followed me in the driveway yesterday and said, we watch you on Facebook all the time. Praise God. That's my nephew, Cecil Smith. Cecil and Barbara, I want to say hi to you this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. And everyone else that's going to see this message out there, I want to give you personal greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. And tell you, he loves you. And he wants you to be his own yes. this morning, if you're not. Amen. I want to preach from, the, God is so good. I want to preach from the fourth chapter of, of uh, Ephesians this morning. And I tell you what, there's such knowledge in just a few words that God said yeah. in his word. I, therefore, I want to stand up this morning and put my name in there. I, therefore, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, that say ye, you, that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye 
ye are called. I, therefore, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. I yes. want to be a, his prisoner this morning. Yes. How great it is to be shut in with God. Yes. And not be anything there to come between you and his presence. Come on. I talk so much about Jesus coming to my house. He touched me. He walked into my bedroom and he touched me. But let me tell you something. It don't have to be an experience like that. Come on. Right. <laughs> an experience, what people need is a dose of old time religion. Yes. Amen. They, Amen. they need Jesus in their heart. Yes. Yes. The world would change if the natural man could understand who God is and what he's all about. Yes. Amen. But Jesus said, he told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Yeah. Right. Oh, what I've got to thank God for, for the day that Jesus came into my heart. And things have been different ever since that day. That was August the 22nd. 1983, when the Jesus came into my heart. I mean, I've been to this altar so many times before, and I'm not preaching about anything about me. I'm preaching to glorify God yes. this morning. He came into my heart. I went down an old sinful person that wasn't worth anything with a heart full of, of anger I came up with a, a new man I was a new man came up with a heart full of love yes. for everyone yeah. and I thank God for that to be the prisoner of the Lord is Something that even most Christian people, Brother Don, they don't understand what that is. Come on. I know that life has got to go on. Especially if you work, you've got to be out there every day and you got to face the public. But even amongst the worst kind of people that there is, you can be shut in with God yes. and not let anything of this world get a hold of you and have any effect upon you at all, Brother Bob. But you can be set free through what Jesus Christ done on the cross of Calvary that day when he came to this world with a... Uh, agreement from the God the Father that he was going to be the ultimate sacrifice that there would not need any more uh, to be a holy of holies upon this earth uh, but and, uh, when he said it's finished the veil of the temple was split wide open and something new began to happen then take place at that time because it was made possible for us to enter into the holy of holies in the kingdom of heaven yeah. and that we could go to God the Father personally through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah. and we could take our petitions there and leave them in the hands of uh, Jesus and uh, through the faith that we have in him uh, we can know that everything uh, is going to be all right yes. Amen. I mean it don't make any difference what problems we have uh, God is still in control 
of Brother Cliff here in the United States of America, God is still in control. Yeah. He's the one that's going to be in control when the 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 eastern skies uh, when Jesus appears in the eastern sky and he comes after a church that is prayed up and ready to go. A church that is the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's coming back. Uh, my main thought this morning is being a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ uh, and not allowing anything evil to enter into your life. Uh, you've got authority over these things uh, 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 through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus, you have the authority. Amen. Do you know what that authority is this, today? The word no. I mean, you can say no to the enemy, which is the devil. You can say no. If you want to, you can resist the devil. Yeah. You can uh, surrender, submit yourself to God, Brother Don, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. That's, right. That's what the Word of God says. I've got a dry mouth this morning, and uh, God will take care of that. Amen. And, I get up here so much and I have problems with my throat and God takes care of it. Amen. Right. The God that I serve is bigger. He's bigger than anything. Amen. I, I preach about the Hubble telescope. If they can see 50 billion light years and see God's creation out there at the edge of 50 billion light years, that lets me know that God is a big God. Amen. Amen. That we're surrounded. If we're in the center of this and there's 50 billion light years all the way around us, we're surrounded with the creation of God. Come on. Amen. I don't want to worship the creation. I want to worship the creator Amen. this morning. Amen. I want to be his prisoner this morning. Amen. I want him to take me and put shackles on me if he has to. Keep me in the place that where he can speak to me and I know his voice. Amen. That I'm one of his sheep. Yeah. And I know his voice when he speaks to me. Yeah. But I know the devil's voice, and I know I'm not going to follow after that voice because he he speaks to us through the airwaves. Yeah. He speaks to us through all the evilness in the world. I'm talking about Christian people that are not rooted and grounded that have not become the prisoner of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the enemy that I am here to fight. I mean, I am a warrior in the Lord's army. Yeah. I'm not yeah. just here to walk in peace, but, but I'm here to walk and to fight the enemy every step yeah. of the way. I'm here uh, to let him know who I am. And I'm not anything but the one that I serve is everything. Amen. Amen. It is through him that I entered in uh, uh, about 37 or 38 years ago. I entered into the life's will and the testament of God. I entered into that will on the 22nd uh, day of August uh, in 1983, Sister Jeanette, I entered into a will that makes me a joint heir with Jesus yeah. Christ, makes me an heir of God, yeah. that uh, 
I can stand up here and I can boast about who it is that I'm an heir to. Yeah. And, uh, if, I, if there's any boasting that I can do, it's about the one that I serve. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Amen. This morning. Amen. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Yes. Jesus Christ. Uh, when I go home today, I want to be his prisoner. Yes. And you know what? I want to walk in the spirit. I want to be able to uh, pray in the Spirit. I want to feel uh, Jesus Christ uh, uh, surrounding me. Yeah. I mean, I want to walk in a place uh, uh, to where that he'll never leave me. He says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Yeah. And that tells me that I can have this personal relationship with God. Uh, that uh, is mine, my own relationship, Sister Robin, and that I've got this relationship uh, with God uh, that uh, no one else has got. Right. Uh, you've got your relationship, uh, but I've got mine, and uh, that is my own personal relationship uh, this morning uh, that no one can take that away from me. Uh, there's no power, no place uh, uh, that can take this away from me uh, because it was a gift from Jesus Christ. And uh, when I became a Christian, he gave this gift to me. Amen. That I was his own. Yes. And being his own, oh, uh, he said, I came. He said, I came that you might have this life uh, that I've got for you and have this life uh, uh, more abundantly yeah. and not just a little speck of it, not just enough to get by, but an abundance of the life of God. I can have this more, uh, more than you can have it this morning. It can be your own. Yes. Yeah. My nephew that followed me in the driveway yesterday he said, I watch you on Facebook every Sunday. He said, I'm going to preach it. And he said, he might not want me to say this, but he said, I copied one of your messages and I'm going to preach that message. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I wouldn't listen to myself on Facebook. I wouldn't watch me. I won't listen to, to my, when I'm on the radio, I won't listen to nothing like that. You know what? I don't want to hear myself. <laughs> I want to hear, I want to hear the Lord when he's talking to me because on that end is holiness, righteousness, everything. I don't want to, have anything to do with the flesh. Mama. I want everything to do with the Spirit of God. Yes. <clears throat> One of these days, my Bible tells me, in an instant, in the twinkling of the night, I'm going to be changed. I'm going to be changed from this old mortal body that I'm living in to an immortal body. I'm going to be changed from unrighteousness to righteousness. I mean, there is going to be a glorification going to take place there in the instant, in the twinkling of an eye. If, uh, if I'm dead, when my body comes up out of the grave, it's going to come glorified. If I'm alive, when I stand there and I see the dead and Christ going up to meet the Lord, the next thing that's going to happen, I'm going to be going up right behind them. But I'm going to be glorified. Yeah. And I'm going to be in heaven yeah. to be there from now on. There's no end to it. And the ones that I want to tell you this morning, people that squeeze me out there on Facebook, there is a hell. There's a hell. 
there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. And this place that, that's called hell is a lake of fire that's burning with brimstone and fire. And it goes on. It's time without end that there's no end to. I want to tell you that this morning and give you a warning that today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off until tomorrow because today is the day of salvation. Yes. You need Jesus Christ this morning. You need him in your life. If there's any of my grandchildren are watching the, me this morning, if there will be when this is uh, on the air, I want to tell you that I'm right and you're wrong. And my ways are the ways of God. Uh, your ways are not the ways of God. You that are out there on drugs and the partying and whatever else you're doing, that's not the ways of God. The Bible says there's a way that saveth right unto man, uh, but the end thereof is destruction. Amen. And let me tell you something. It's so simple and so plain this morning to understand what it is that God has got in plan for us, uh, and that is that we uh, turn from this natural man that we was born into, and we change, that there is a change that takes place, and we uh, learn the ways of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you read Isaiah 55, verse uh, 8 and 9, it will tell you about the ways of God, that his ways are not our ways, and our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Uh, and uh, it goes on and on. It says uh, God's thoughts are so much higher Amen. than man's thoughts are. Oh, we need to be uh, uh, transformed by the renewing of our mind and not conformed to this whole world. But we need to be transformed and there's only one that can do that. Uh, Brother Don, this morning, there's only one that can do that. There was only one that was found uh, worthy to do that, and that's Jesus Christ. And it's by his blood that, uh, and that, uh, and that it blot out all the articles uh, uh, that you had wrote down against you, and uh, one drop of his blood will blot out everything that you ever done. The Bible says uh, that he'll uh, put your uh, sins uh, into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up against you anymore. Amen. What a God we serve this morning, Amen. Sister Bonnie. Amen. What a God that we serve. And he's our Redeemer this morning. And he's my elder brother this morning. He's my provider. He's my Lord and Savior. He's Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And, uh, uh, we can have this personal relationship with him. Yes. It's free. Amen. Oh, you can't buy it this morning. That's right. Amen. You can't have enough money that you can buy it. But it's yours for the asking. Yeah. for the receiving, if you only receive, if you ask and believe, you can receive this morning. Yeah, right. Amen. Now I'm going to read another scripture too, and then I'm going to close this morning. I got started early, but I'll probably still go at 12 o'clock at least. <laughs> it says, with all loneliness, this is what I want to get into this morning. The, this, let me read the uh, title of this. The walk and the service of the believer as in Christ and having the Spirit. Let's walk in the Spirit this morning. We can do it. I'm going to get around to that preaching about walking in the Spirit. There's a lot to it. This part of it, with all loneliness, this is the way we walk in the spirit and meekness and long suffering 
and forbearing one another in love. That's, that's part of walking in spirit right there. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the of the spirit and the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is Ephesians 4. It's good for anyone this morning. Amen. Christian, if you're a Christian, get a hold of this. Hallelujah. See what it is that God wants out of you. Yeah. He wants complete and total surrender does. to him. He wants us to learn his ways, to know what his thoughts are, to keep the thoughts that are not his out of the place that the devil wants to play with, the mind. That is where the Lord Jesus Christ speaks to you, goes in your heart. But we have the ability to censor what gets the pipe up here. It don't have to go on down inside at all. You know what? Somebody told me one time what a trash can's for. Put trash in. Yeah. But a lot of people put trash down inside of them and they become a trash can. Trash. But everywhere as they walk, they, it's just like people throwing trash out the window of a car. That used to, you used to see that back in my early days when I first started traveling up and down the highway. You'd see somebody roll the window down. Most time back then the window was already down. Out would go some trash. <laughs> But you know what? That didn't speak well of the person that was doing that, even though they may not get in trouble for it. And it's the same way with us as being Christians. We don't want to be slinging trash around. We want to be glorifying God, Amen. testifying about him, no matter how the people are talking that you're around. Yeah. When you open up your mouth, let it glorify God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'll guarantee you one thing. God will return the blessing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. There is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Yes. Oh, there's so much in every one of these scriptures to preach about. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. I'm going to read about three, four, five more and then I'm going to quit but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. When I read that, I thought God had to have, Jesus had to have a lot of grace mm. to put up with a person like me. Come on. For the 25 years that I run from him, after he called me, preached, I thought I can't never do that. Uh, I can't stand in front of people. My nephew told me yesterday and he broke down and started crying. He's 77 years old. He said, I look at you preaching uh, before a crowd like that. And he said, I tell Barbara that there was a time when Manuel couldn't have done that. And he broke down and started crying. I said, Cecil, it's uh, what God can do for you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, what 
he has done. He came to set us free. Amen. I, I was under the grips of fear of being in front of a crowd, which a lot of people in the natural are that way. Especially if you're if you've grown up and your parents said you're to be seen and not heard. Yeah. It makes you afraid to speak. And the, in school, in a play, I would just be petrified. I mean, I would be scared to death in a play. I've been in a lot of them when I was in school, and I, I got through them. But when the, I was at Patterson, the magician would come by there every once in a while. And for some reason, he looked down and picked me out, <laughs> had me to come up there. And things would disappear out of his hand. I didn't know where they went to because I couldn't. My eyes wasn't fast enough to see what he done. A lot of times they'd go right over my head and I'd never see them. My older brother and my parents, they'd tell me, they'd, they'd say, didn't you see what he done? And whatever it was, he threw it right over my head. It got my attention to one hand while he done it with the other hand. Bible says for us not to let our left hand know what our right hand does. And the, and, and speaking of giving alms, and we need to really be careful about what we're doing. If we do it to be seen, then that is our reward right there. Just yeah. what people see and say about it. I don't think I've ever done anything that was worth much praise anyway. Come on. The only good thing I ever done was surrendered my life to God. Come on. And the, anything else that was accomplished in my life, it's because God won. Uh, he said he'd take the. Yes. And that, it's the. People that really needs him that he can take and use. Yeah. If you don't need him, if you think that in your heart, mm -hmm. I'll guarantee you, you will never get nothing from oh. him. It may be mercy. He, he may be merciful on you and give you a chance to be saved. But if you think in your heart, I'm the one that's getting me through this life. Look at what I've done. Look what I've accomplished, you're in the wrong spirit. Come on. Amen. Because that is pride. Yes. And pride, pride comes before a fall. Amen. Let me get on with this. Uh, but and to every one of us is given, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. You know what? I can still talk to him. You can still talk to him this morning. It don't make any difference how far, as far as I know, the Hubble telescope can't see heaven. If it has ever picked it up, they never said anything about it. But I can reach him. I told him one night I couldn't make it without him. Come on. And he came and he touched me that night. Mm -hmm. Jesus touched me. And he, he talked to me and he preached to me. And he gave me some apostle, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and some teachers. 
Ain't God good this morning? Yes. yes. He fulfills every office that we need huh. in the church mm -hmm. that we've got need of. Mm -hmm. Not only did he provide all these offices, we've got singers, got Brother Aaron plays bass, got everyone that's part of the praise team here. It's so much to be thankful for. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. we was like Saturday night that we had the singing. <clears throat> I thought the glory of God was alive in this place yeah. like Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was part of my family in a roundabout way because Sean is married to Ashley, which is Janet's daughter. And the family, the Sean's family, is really, they're a spiritual group, I think. Yeah. yeah. And they, they really, I mean, they really glorify God here through singing and preaching. I love to hear Miss Wallace preach. I don't remember her name right now, but I love to hear her sing. I mean, I love to hear her husband preach. And be honest about it, oh, I won't say more on it because I've been recorded, but I, I didn't know, I didn't know what kind of people it was. And when I got acquainted with them, I fell in love with them. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, how could I help but they're my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Sean is my, I guess you'd call it step, son, grandson, and law. Uh, he's, he's Janet, but yet Janet's children are my children and grandchildren. And uh, I thank the Lord for his many blessings. My Saturday night was one of them. Sunday night was another one. Brother Richard, yeah. I, it wasn't as good as it was here. <laughs> I'm a little bit prejudiced. It was a little better here than it was out there. <laughs> Brother Bob agrees with me. We won't tell Brother Richard you said that. <laughs> no, no, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> he asked me to come preach one of these Thursday nights. And, uh, I said, I'll be out there. He might pick on me if he heard me say that. <laughs> I love you, Brother Richard. <laughs> He's my brother in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone got anything on your heart this morning before we close? If not, let's stand and we'll be dismissed. <laughs>